Hi, and welcome to week 51. Just one more week, and we are finished with our 52 tips on Reason and Record. This week, we're going to get even deeper into Thor, and we're going to have a look at the filter section, the envelopes, the LFOs, and talk a little bit about the mod matrix. As we learned last week, there are four different filter types and three filter slots available in Thor. We are going to look at filter slots 1 and 2 first, which are per voice filters, meaning that the filter settings are applied for each note that you play on the keyboard. We already covered what a low pass filter sounds like in week 45, so we don't need to go into much detail here. But you should know that this filter is completely new and was inspired by a classic Moog design, and there are a few things that are different and new about this low pass filter, so let's cover those. There is a built in shaper in the feedback or self oscillation loop. If self oscillation is activated, the shaper will distort the sound to produce these nonlinear characteristics. To adjust the intensity of this distortion, you use the drive parameter. The mode switch allows you to select from different slopes, including a 6 dB, 12 dB, 18 dB, which is what the famous Roland TB303 baseline had, and two types of 24 dB filters. The difference between Type 1 and Type 2 is where the built-in shaper is placed in the feedback loop. Type 1 is after the filter output but before the feedback loop, and Type 2 is before the filter input and after the feedback loop. Note that self-oscillation must be activated for this built-in shaper to operate. The next filter type is the state variable filter. This is a multi-mode filter and it offers 12 dB low pass, band pass, high pass, and notch and peak filter modes, which are sweepable between the high pass and low pass states, similar to the vintage Oberheim SEM filter. We also went over some of these filter types and how they sound in week 45, except for the sweepable notch and peak filters. When this knob is set in the center, you will get either a peak or notch filter depending on what you selected but by turning this knob to the left or right, you can set it to take on a more low pass or high pass characteristic, as you hear in this example. Both the low pass ladder and state variable filters can self oscillate and will produce a pitch with high resonance settings if self oscillate is activated. You can adjust how the frequency tracks the keyboard by using the keyboard knob. If it is set fully clockwise, it will produce a 12 semitone per octave tracking. Next up is the comb filter, which we learned about in week 48, but this comb filter has a much more aggressive sound to my ears than the one in Maelstrom, as you can hear. The final filter type is the formant filter, which produces vowel or vocal type filter sounds. There are no cutoff frequency or resonance parameters, instead you have horizontal X and vertical Y sliders, and they work together to produce the formant sounds. You also have a gender parameter which changes the basic timbre of the formant from between male, which is set all the way to the left, and female characteristics, or set all the way to the right. Note that the envelope, velocity, and keyboard knobs only affect the X parameter. As you can hear, this filter can be quite expressive. The audio output of filter 1 is routed into the shaper, which allows you to treat the signal using wave shaping. Now we learned about wave shaping in week 48 on the Maelstrom. 
But this shaper in Thor has a total of nine different modes, and each mode will distort and modify the sound in a different way, with the dry parameter allowing you to adjust how intense the effect is, as you can hear when I just run through them in order here. Also remember that you have to activate the shaper here if you want to use it. Before we move on to the envelopes and LFOs, let's review how you route the audio signal from the oscillators to the filters and then on to the amp in Thor. Remember that you select the oscillator types here, then the mixer section is used to adjust levels and balance, then you select which mixer outputs are routed to either filters 1 and 2 using these numbered selector switches. Next you can route the audio that's coming out of filter 1 through the shaper to filter 2 by using this routing switch here for a serial filter setup or route the output of filter 1 and 2 in parallel so they are independent by using these switches. From the outputs of the filters, the audio passes through the amp section, which can be controlled by velocity, and you can also adjust the pan from left to right. Finally, the audio passes through the global section, where you can use the delay and chorus effects, and also a global filter which would affect the entire sound, as opposed to a per voice filter like we learned about in filters 1 and 2. Ok, now on to the envelopes and LFOs. We learned the basics about what an envelope is in week 45, so I don't really need to cover that, but as you can see there are four different envelope generators in Thor. The filter, amp, and global envelopes are hardwired or pre-wired to their parameter destinations, as their name implies, but can also be used to modulate any parameter using the modulation matrix as well. We will cover how to do that when we go into detail on the mod matrix next week. The mod envelope is not wired or connected to any parameter and neither are the LFOs for that matter. These need to be assigned to a destination parameter using the mod matrix. Both the mod and global envelopes can be synced to the tempo of the song by clicking this button, and when you do that, the parameter sliders will change from milliseconds to time divisions. You can also loop the envelopes and use them like additional LFOs by activating the loop parameter. The delay setting is how long the envelopes will wait until after they are triggered before you start to hear the effect, similar to the delay parameter that's on the LFO section. You could use the mod envelope to create sounds like a pitch jump in the sound for a really punchy effect by choosing the pitch of any of the oscillators as the destination in the mod matrix like this, and setting an amount to some value other than zero. Speaking of the LFOs, there are two of them. LFO1 is a per voice LFO and can be key synced, meaning it will restart for each key pressed, and it works just like we learned about in the Maelstrom LFOs in week 48. There are a lot of different waveform types to choose from, and you could even use LFO1 as a fourth oscillator source by routing its audio output using the mod matrix. and also using the keyboard follow knob, which when turned fully clockwise will allow you to fully track the keyboard to change the LFO rate or pitch. LFO 2 is a global LFO, meaning that its effect will be for the entire sound and not per voice or note. As with the mod envelope, in order to hear the effect of either LFO 1 or 2, 
you need to set them as a source in the mod matrix and then the parameter that you want to affect as the destination and then set an amount other than zero, positive or negative. Next week, we're going to get even deeper into the mod matrix and also cover the sequencer section and a few additional parameters that would be important for tweaking or creating sounds in Thor. Well, just one more video to go. I'll see you soon. <laughs>